This video begins our study of the simplex method. The simplex method is a way of using matrix techniques to solve linear programming problems, the same kind of problems we've been solving by graphing. One advantage of the simplex method is that you can solve problems with any number of variables. The graphing method is really applicable to only two variables because we can graph, only effect we can graph effectively only in two dimensions. Let's start by applying it to the kind of farmer problem that we've seen in the past, a farmer planting corn and soybeans. When we visited this problem earlier, we had x and y representing respectively the number of acres of corn and soybeans. We had a land constraint that stemmed from the fact that it was a 320 acre farm. Uh, the farmer had only $20,000 in cash on hand, so there was a capital constraint and there was a storage space constraint involving the number of bushels of storage required by the two crops and the limit on storage available and our non-negative constraints. So this is the complete setup of the problem that we had and which we have, re and which we have previously solved by the graphical method. To start to apply the simplex method to this problem, the first thing we have to do is take each of the constraints and add what is called a slack variable. The first constraint is the land constraint, x plus y less than or equal to $300. We add a new variable, which I'm calling u, into that expression uh, to turn the inequality into an equation. And in effect, what u is representing is unused land. If you think of this equation as saying the, amount, the number of acres planted in corn plus the number of acres planted in soybeans which might not be all 320 acres. The, the x plus y might be less than 320. But if we tack on another term to represent the unplanted land, how many acres of land aren't planted or all, then on the left-hand side we've accounted for all 321, uh, 320 acres, so we have an equation. Acres of corn plus acres of soybeans plus whatever's not planted in either crop equals all 320 acres in the farm. In the same way, we add a slack variable in the capital constraint. There are $20,000. They might not all be spent, but if we add together the dollars spent on planting corn plus the dollars spent planting soybeans plus whatever leftover dollars there are, then we've accounted for all $20,000. And similarly with regard to storage space, add another slack variable to represent possibly unused storage space. 100x represents the storage space used for corn, 40y is the storage space used for soybeans, plus whatever leftover storage space there is accounts for all 19,200 uh, bushels of storage. So we have gone from our three constraints to these three equations with slack variables, and we also have our profit function which we're going to turn into an equation. We're going to rewrite the profit function as uh, bring the x and y terms over to the left and we'll have it uh, written in the form minus 60x minus 90y plus p is equal to zero. This is, this is in, sometimes called the standard form of an equation since we've got all the variables on the left and a raw number on the right. It's the four equations that we have here, the three that involve the slack variables and the profit equation once it's been rewritten in this form. These are the four equations that are going to make up what's called the initial simplex tableau. Let's put them all together, group them all together. The three constraints turned into equations by adding slack variables and the profit function written as an equation in this standard form. What we do is to write down the augmented matrix for that system, and I'm using the term augmented matrix here in exactly the same way we used it in chapter one. We have five, um, we have, we started out with, with two variables in the problem, x and y, when we first approached the problem. Then we introduced three slack variables, u, v, and w, and we're going to treat p as a variable since it's one of the symbols in this bottom equation. So we have a column for the x coefficients and for the y coefficients. Those were our initial variables. We have a column for each of our three slack variables, u, v, and w, and we have a column for the profit, p. 
and then on the right far right column of course again represents the numbers on the right sides of the equal marks in all the equations so this really is the the augmented matrix just exactly as we discussed it in chapter 1 in the first in the first equation the x y and u coefficients are all 1 which is why we have ones in these spots and the other variables don't appear in that first equation so they're these entries in the first row are 0 and then the 320 is the number on the right from the second equation we pick up a 50 x coefficient a 100 y coefficient and a 1 v coefficient there is no u w or p term so these entries are 0 and the 20,000 is the number on the right from the third equation we have a 100 x coefficient a 40 y coefficient and a 1 w coefficient and there are no u, v, or p terms, so we have zeros in those spots and 19,200 for the number on the right. And in the very bottom row, we have a minus 60x coefficient, a minus 90y coefficient, a 1p coefficient, and there's no u, v, or w term, so zeros in these spots, and a zero here because of the zero on the right. One more time. What I have written down is nothing more or less than the augmented matrix for this system of equations. Augmented matrix exactly as we treated it in chapter 1. When we're applying the simplex method, we refer to that augmented matrix, matrix as the initial simplex tableau. Tableau, of course, is the French word for table. Uh, the initial simplex tableau, and this is the starting point for a simplex method solution for the linear programming problem. Now let's return to the checkers and chess sets problem, the manufacturer that's making the two games. The problem is described here the same as it was when we looked at it in terms of a graphical solution uh, back in part two of the class. The setup that we did then was to let X and Y represent respectively number of checker sets made and number of chess sets made. We had a constraint caused by the limited number of boards available, by the limited uh, amount of wood available, and by the fact that the distributor could accept only a maximum of 1,250 checker sets and 750 chess sets. So this is the setup that we started with when we did the graphical solution. Let's start with the same setup and see what a simplex method solution would start with. So we're going to be, just as we went to the, through the augmented matrix of a system of equations, which we called the initial simplex tableau for the previous problem, we're going to try to get to the initial simplex tableau for this problem. As before, we began by introducing slack variables to turn the constraint inequalities into equations. In the board's constraint, we introduce a slack variable, which we'll call u, so that x plus y, rather than being less than or equal to 1900, x plus y plus u will equal 1900, so u would represent uh, possibly unused boards introduce the slack variable v in the second constraint. Uh, v would represent possible unused units of wood, the number of units of wood used for checker sets plus the number of units of wood used for chess sets plus whatever wood is left over would account for all the 80,000 units of wood available. In the third constraint, x less than or equal to 1250, add the slack variable w, x plus w is equal to 1250. So how could we describe verbally what w represents? Uh, 1250 was the, was the limit on how many uh, checker sets the distributor would accept. So if, if in the optimal solution x were to assume a value less than 1250, then w would represent the gap between that value and the uh, 1250 limit. And similarly introduce a slack variable running out of letters here, call, call it t I suppose, uh, 
for the slack variable in the constraint y less than or equal to 750 to make it y plus t equals 750. So we've taken our four constraints, introduced slack variables in all of them. Uh, we need to now think about the profit function. We have the, the four equations in, involving the four slack variables. The profit function in this case was P equals X plus 1.25 Y because there was a dollar profit from each checker set and a dollar and a quarter profit from each chess set. So we have to rewrite that profit function, bring all the terms over to the left, minus X minus 1.25 Y plus P is equal to zero. So this is the profit function written in standard form. We put it up with the other equations and those are all the equations that go into the initial simplex tableau. We have the four equations with the four slack variables we've made up and the profit equation. So since we have five equations here, we're going to have five rows in our initial simplex tableau in this instance. We'll have a column for the x coefficients, for the y coefficients, for the u coefficients, v coefficients, w coefficients, t coefficients, and for the p coefficients. How many columns is that going to be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus for the numbers on the right, sounds like we'll wind up with eight columns, doesn't it? And here's what it would be. Um, X, Y, the original variables, U, V, W, and T, all the slack variables which I've introduced, a column for the profit coefficients, P, and the numbers on the right. Shall we check a couple of those rows to make sure that they're right? Let's check the second one, for instance, which came from this equation. 20x coefficient goes here, 80y coefficient, 1v coefficient. There are no u, w, t, or p terms in that second equation, so these are all zeros. And 80,000 for the number on the right. Uh, similarly for all the other equations, y plus t equals 750, 1y plus 1t, and all the other coefficients are 0, 750 on the right. And the last row of the, simple, of the initial simplex tableau comes from the profit equation, uh, minus 1 for the x coefficient, minus 1.25 for the y coefficient, plus 1 for the p coefficient, the other entry is 0, and a 0 on the right. Let me emphasize that the way the simplex method is going to work, it is always going to be necessary for us to put the profit function or the cost function or whatever it is that represents what we're maximizing or minimizing. The equation for that, that's the equation that has to be listed on the bottom and the one that has to correspond to the bottom row of our initial simplex tableau. So what we've done in this movie is to simply illustrate the setup for the initial simplex tableau. We haven't done anything with it yet, but what we will, just looking ahead a bit, what we will do with the simplex tableau is to do row operations on it, very similar to the kind of row operations we did in chapter one, only now our goal will be not to solve a system of equations, but rather to solve the linear programming problem.